has a, a brain tumor. It's referred to as medulloblastoma. And there are several different types of brain tumors, but his in particular uh, grows near the brain stem. It is basically an expansion of uh, cells that just sort of grow out of control. Uh, the body hasn't turned off the signaling to those particular cells and they just keep growing and growing. And it's the pressure on other components in the brain that ultimately will cause death if not treated. For three decades, thousands of stories were given life in our print room before being sent to your home. Each week, an individual walks into this room to give life to an incredible, one-of-a-kind story. These aren't your local politicians or well-known celebrities. They are everyday people, much like yourself, eager to share a piece of their lives with you. Complete devastation goes through, went through my mind, you know, just how can this be, this, this could not be happening, this feel like you're in an alternate universe, like this is not happening to my child, how can this be happening to my child? I don't usually react to intensely initially uh, because they didn't really give us much time to sort of absorb what was happening. We were given a call after the scans came back with showing a mass and told to basically pack our bags and come on down to Children's Hospital. We knew we would be there overnight, but we, wasn't, we certainly weren't prepared for the magnitude of what we were about to encounter. Well, we told him that they, they had found something in, he had gone in for a CT scan. And we did tell him that we had found something in the scan. Uh, we didn't really have, again, much information at that point. So we told him we were going to go down to the hospital and they were going to, you know, look into it further. I was pretty mad that I didn't get to finish my Cheetos, but other than that, I was a little, like, upset that I couldn't, like, finish my day. I was kind of just fine with it not really knowing a lot, just that we have to go down to the hospital. At that point, they had a pretty good idea that they were going to have to do surgery pretty quickly. And that's uh, essentially what they prepared us for. And they kind of just said, you have a mass in your head, we have to get it out. So I'm just expecting, well, as a, as a baby, I had two surgeries, so I'm kind of used to it. I know what has to happen, and it's kind of startling at first, but really all I was scared of is that, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to, I might die, but I kind of took it well. Anytime your child goes in for surgery, it's, you know, are they going to wake up from anesthesia? So that's, you know, my initial concern. After that is, are they going to get it all? Are they going to be able to remove the entire tumor? Is it at that point, is it going to be cancerous? What is our steps after that? Um, is he going to be okay with it being in the brain? There's so many other things that could be affected in brain surgery. You know, is he going to come out being the same child that he was going into surgery? Um, and just putting our faith um, in his surgical team.
heavily wired to a lot of tubes and wires. You had four IVs in him at the time, one in each leg, one in each arm. And so it was somewhat immobilizing for him to begin with. And the first thing I remember him saying that sounded like a problem to me was he asked, why am I talking funny? It didn't seem like he was talking funny to me, but he, he noticed it right off the bat. You could watch him, it took him longer to get his words out. And you could watch him be frustrated because you knew that the thoughts and the words were there in his brain, but between his brain and his body and mouth trying to get them out took a lot longer. The doctors and the team were very reassuring to us that this was normal, um, but it was not something we knew going into that he was going to come out this way. Um, we got really good at figuring out what worked for him. Zachary would get even more frustrated if you tried to talk for him. The place where the surgery was performed is the part of the brain that, uh, that controls motor function. So just purely the fact of going in, much less the removal of matter, caused enough disruption that the brain would swell and all of these areas where the wiring is, if you will, are disrupted. And so the body just stops. Once we saw the acceleration uh, of his recovery, that's when things started getting a little bit more calm and we sort of went back into tactical mode. Okay, now we're gonna work on this and we're gonna work on that. If we have fewer healthy cells exposed to less radiation, logic would simply suggest that that's better. There really are, are very few cases of it ever coming back after about that three-year mark. So we're, we're on pins and needles for that uh, because it does it is sort of a nasty tumor and that it can come back, sure. uh, but we're, you know, cautiously optimistic. He is our one and only, so he is our, everything. you know, he is our everything, he, he is our attention. life. Um, they ask us how, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. And it's every day looking at him and he's going through it, it's not us going through it. With his attitude and his positiveness and everything else, it makes it hard to be sad for <laughs> him. Having him is our, you know, greatest blessing and I feel like he has given us the strength to help him, you know, through it. I've decided I want to be like Zachary when I grow up.